Today is the third part of my Let's Buy an Avata 2 and Tear It Down series. In part one, I did an unboxing on my live stream and proceeded to rip that aircraft apart. In part two, we took the Goggles 3 apart and today we're going to be working on the FPV Remote version 3. Now, if you are interested in seeing those other teardowns, there will be links to them in the description. Before we do that, I just want to say a huge thank you to Grey Arrow Drone Club. We would not have been able to buy this Avata without their sponsorship. There will be a link to them in the description. If you're interested in checking out their website, please do so. They have a forum. They also have maps of places you can fly in the UK. And they also have their own insurance scheme where if you join them, you can get up to five million pounds of public liability as well. So if you're interested in seeing them, there will be a link to it in the description. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's tear the DJI FPV Remote version three down. Okay, now the reason we're tearing this down today is there's quite a lot of changes under the hood on this remote and whilst it may not look that different externally, there's actually an entire new radio system involved. In the past, the DJI FPV remotes have communicated with their drones. So on the original Avata, the remote spoke to the drone, on the FPV drone and all of that stuff, these two talked as well as the goggles talking as well. The big change though on the Avata 2 is this no longer talks to the drone, instead this communicates with with the DJI Goggles 3. There is a new 2.4 gigahertz link. If you saw my teardown on these goggles, there's a dedicated antenna for it here. GFSK is what they're calling it. And it's a link between the remote controller and the goggles. And the goggles now sort of act as a hub and talk to the drone rather than the remote talk to the drone. Now, as a result of this, obviously DJI have had to make a lot of changes. The first thing you will notice with this remote when you get it, it is a lot lighter than the previous remote controller. I don't know why at this moment in time, but clearly whatever they've done has taken some weight out of it. The external antenna is now gone and it now shows this little logo up here for an antenna. And really it's gonna be interesting to see what is going on under the hood. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do to tear this down is take off these covers. If I just pop them back, there are some screws under here. There's one there one there, there and there. This looks like that's clipped on afterwards as well. So what I'm going to go and do is get these screws out. We'll try and pop that off and then I'll come back and let's see if we can get inside. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken this back. I've taken out the four screws. There's one there. There's one there in that top corner there. Let me just move my hand. So you've got one there, one there and exactly the same on the other side, there and there. I've then popped off this top cover, which has the antenna symbol, and lo and behold, there's nothing under it. It is just a plastic blank. Now, to get in this, it looks like it's all clipped together. The hint of that is those clips there. So what I'm gonna do is try and press in there. Ooh, we can start to see it separate. It feels like it's clipped all the way around. I'm gonna get in there with my plastic pry tool, which has just vanished. So I'm gonna try and get in around here. Oh, okay. That's definitely opening up down that side there. So what I'm gonna do is get in all the way around and hopefully try and pop it open. Okay, after a lot of fighting, I finally got the casing open. There are loads of clips along the bottom here. I spent quite a bit of time trying to do it without breaking it. I've lifted this cover off. You can see between the back cover, we have a couple of things, our button and our potentiometer on the back corner cross over. So this one comes over to this little area over here. So we can simply unplug that. And then this one is glued there from the looks of it. Yeah, there's a bit of glue holding that wire there to stop it coming off. Let me just dig into that carefully above the battery. We're gonna to have to be careful. Maybe a pair of snips on this. I don't want to cut the wire, but I just want to cut the glue so I can. Okay. 
Oh, there we go. That's free. And then I can unplug him from over there. Okay, looking in here, you can see some really interesting things. And one of the first ones is the fact that there is only one battery, yet there is space for two. We have our cell over here, which is our 2600 milliamp hour, basically 18650 cell. It's lithium ion, 9.36 watt hour. You can see that battery there with the cable coming out the side. It's not a typical one, but it is there. However, there is space for one this side, yet there isn't one. So if you wanted to do a mod on this, there's the potential for adding another battery in there. Although there isn't a connector, so what you'd have to do is parallel them up. Now, just to note, what we've got here is our main PCB. And the first thing you'll see is there is our antennas. You can see that located on the PCB there. Whilst you've got that symbol on the top for the antenna, that isn't the antenna. Remember, as I've said several times already, this remote only communicates with the goggles. It doesn't communicate with the drone. So it doesn't need normal antennas like we're used to seeing. And instead, they've got PCB antennas there. There are two little antenna connections down there on the board. On this side, we've got a flash ROM chip. We've got another IC over here, but I'm not seeing the RF IC here. So I think what I'm gonna do is continue to tear down. We'll take off all of these other connections. You can see the gimbals are mounted under there. That's where our adjustments are. So I think I'm gonna have to take off these uh, top two boards get the battery and everything out, and we'll try and get that PCB out to have a look at what the RF chipset is in this remote. Okay, so there is the board out on this side. You've got antennas here. And on this side, you've got antennas there. So you've got two sides of the PCB with quite different antennas. You've got them coming over here into that RF board area. We've got a can on top of that. So we'll pop that off in a minute and take a look at what we've actually got in there. We've got some chipsets down here. We've got our two buttons. We've got a chipset with a T on it. We'll get that under the microscope to have a look. Overall, a much simpler design than we had from the drones in the past. What's interesting is you've got vertical polarization and then horizontal polarization there. So they've got the two polarizations matched the antennas don't actually look the same they do look a little bit different interestingly not sure what that's about these ones over here go through the traces through to the board to the rf chipset again so there's definitely two there but yeah overall rather interesting so i think we'll get this lid off and then we'll get it under the microscope. Okay, so rather than do this under the microscope, what I decided to do was take my still images and that's what we're gonna take a look at next. So here you're seeing one side of the PCB. It's upside down at the moment. So if we just rotate it, this is the side that you were seeing in that video just now. You can see the antennas here. If we take a closer look at the board, so we've got our USB-C at the bottom, our speaker located there. So if someone wants to remove it, these where you'll find it. On this side, we've got a little Giga Devices chip. That is a flash ROM. And then really, it's just power supply really on this side of the board and the antennas. You can see there, we've got a power supply chip. I have checked it is power. We've got a um, inductor there, coil, another coil here. You can see some unpopulated areas over here, which is quite interesting. Another unpopulated area over here as well. We'll talk a bit more about that later on. But this side of the board, more than anything, is just connectors and I.O. And then if we zoom up, we've got our two antennas located there. If we zoom in, you can see the tracks go down to here and they go into some pads over this side here. One of these is the ground antenna. So that one there is the ground antenna. That seems to be the driven element. And you can also see on this side of the board, we have 
two antenna connectors located as well, but the main RF chipset is over the other side. Flipping over, you can see here, again, we've got the back side of the board with that USB-C connector down the bottom. We've got our two buttons here and here, bit more power supply. What you will note is on this side of the PCB, there is a lot more unpopulated component locations than there is on the other. We will find that there is an SOC here. There's a Giga Devices ARM-based SOC, so no STM. They're over to Giga Devices. It's a GD32F415, so F4 series from ARM. But there is a lot that is unpopulated, which is quite interesting. And it's actually my belief that this remote board has been designed for a number of different uses. And in this use case, it's got internal antennas. You can see up there is the other two antennas. So the other ones were horizontal. These are vertical. And you can see them going into the main RF area over here, which we'll take a look at a little bit closer in a minute. The big difference in this remote compared to the other remotes from DJI is OcuSync is gone. There is no 0304 P1 chipset, any of that in this remote controller. DJI have now moved over to a more traditional 2.4 gigs Bluetooth based chipset, but we don't believe they're using Bluetooth. They're calling it GSFK or GFSK, whichever way it round it is. I can't remember at the point of me recording this video, but that is what they're calling it. And that is based on this chipset that you're seeing here. If I just zoom out and zoom into that chipset specifically, you'll see that is the N52810. That is a low power Bluetooth communications chipset. But what we think is DJI have sort of repurposed that as their main R RF chipset for this system that then has a little um, clock down there and then moving down we've got our power amplifier that is from Skyworks you can see the Skyworks logo there so that is the 66112-1 and then you can see the antenna tracks heading off you've got them coming into that one there this one here is coming straight in that one there is going off to a uh, via. You can see the via there through to the other side of the board. Really, more than anything, the big difference in this remote is that there is an OcuSync now. That means there's no need for a heat sink. That means it's going to use less power, hence the reason it only has one battery. And DJI have been overall able to sort of slim down how many components are in the remote controller. No more customized chipsets. That's largely what's driven the cost reduction on things like this, the DJI Motion 3. I haven't torn this one down yet still based on the same RF chipset again it will just be a smaller version of this remote controller and really everything we're seeing here is off the shelf commodity gigabit devices GD32 very cheap arm based chipset we've got this cheap RF front end chipset based on Bluetooth there's nothing here custom nothing here expensive and that's allowed DJI to drive the price down on these specific components Okay, so overall, that's the teardown of the DJI FPV Remote version 3. Now, I haven't, as I've said, torn down this yet, the Love Toy 3. It's looking like to get into this is going to be destructive. I don't really want to do that. I don't want to completely destroy it to get into it. I am still trying to find a way to do it. And if I do, I will release a separate video. But I'm not really expecting to find much different. Single battery, again, in this. It'll be the same chipset, same probably single antenna in this rather than two and overall it's a big change from what DJI have done in the past especially compared to what we saw on say the FPV remote version 2 as I've said several times the big change here is this and this now only communicate with the goggles they don't need to pump out huge amounts of power but what is actually interesting about that is they are still set up to do that if they need to for instance this still has quite a high power amplifier in it whilst it isn't communicating with the drone it appears it is more than capable of doing so if it needed to. The drone definitely is able to receive the signal as well if it wanted to. However, 
today it doesn't appear to be the case that DJI is. They could reprogram the OcuSync radio on this to pick the signals up if they wanted to. There is so much going on in here and there is a listing for that special communication under the FCC filing. But right now DJI appear to have chosen to do all the comms via the goggles. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with the support for the goggles 2 Integra and the FPV Remote 2. I suspect that will work the same as it did in the past, but we'll have to wait and see. It's my, also my feeling that I don't think there'll be cross compatibility here. For the people holding out for the FPV Remote Version 2 to work on the Avata 2 with the Goggles 3, I'm not so convinced that's going to happen. My belief is, my personal thoughts are, you're going to have this hard line in the sand, because we know DJI loves hard lines. So you're going to have Goggles 2 and Integra with the FPV Remote 2, or Goggles 3, FPV Remote 3, Love Toy 3, Vibrate Edition, etc, etc. Now, I really hope you found this interesting. If you're interested in seeing a teardown of the Goggles 3, there'll be a link to it in the description. Also, a link to the teardown of the Avata 2 as well. All of the images for this will be going on my wiki as well. If you're interested in seeing them, there will be a link to the FPV wiki in the description. If you want to support me to allow me to keep making content like this in the future, please do also consider checking out the link to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. I want to say a huge thank you to all of my Patreons. We would not be able to keep doing this without your support. Anyway, that's it on this one. I hope you found it interesting. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.